Let's just show everybody this headline in The Times. Uh, school children hold mock trial of Tory MP Richard Drax over ancestral slavery links. Now, this relates to a campaign charity uh, set up and led by the human rights lawyer Clive Stafford-Smith. They've been staging mock trials in schools. Future ones will prosecute... Nigel Farage over Brexit. Uh, it will prosecute Nick Clegg over tuition fees, Tony Blair for Iraq and Priti Patel on the UK's immigration policy. We have Clive Stafford-Smith, I think, with us now. Um, Clive, are you saying that Brexit was a crime and that you are going to prosecute Nigel Farage as a perpetrator? No, of course not. What we're talking about is an educational process. The charity I've set up is an educational one. And the idea is to help uh, really fabulous teachers provide experiences to young people who can then learn about all sorts of things that what I would refer to as my generation, a slightly decrepit one today, I will say. <laughs> um, the, what, we've, what we've been doing that has a very big impact on their world, and you know, one hopes that from this, the young people going to learn a whole lot sure. of things about history. Right, but 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 take take us through it. How would it work then? You're going to put Nigel Farage, for example, on trial for Brexit. Well, I know Nigel Farage, and, you know, he's one of the few people, I think, who will have the courage to show up at a trial like this, and I'll certainly invite him, and defend what he did. And, you know, what we just did in the Drax trial, for example, is there were prosecutors and defence lawyers. So mm. there were three young people prosecuting, three young people defending and then a bunch of people who were all young uh, sitting as jurors. And the idea was that they would put together a case theory memo that was all sides of these questions. Mm. And then the issue would be presented as one would with a real trial. Obviously, no one's going to prison or anything. No. <laughs> but with any luck, it's going to educate people and get these young kids. They were fabulous. Right. I, but I think the, the, the interesting point about this is the prism through which you've set up these cases or the trial. So just to stick with Brexit, you're saying it's wrong and you're blaming Nigel Farage for it. Uh, it was wrong. Otherwise, what, what, what's the trial about? No, these are things that the kids have come up with, right? They're right. issues that the kids are interested in. And so they're exploring those things. Mm. Now, clearly, you can't have a trial without someone, whether it's a civil or criminal trial, without someone being alleged to have done something wrong. But the issue is then, whether you hear both sides, you discuss the whole thing, and then you make up your own mind. Right, and so if a, it, if a student um, came to you and suggested putting the lawyer Gina Miller, for example, on trial for perhaps trying to subvert the will of the people, as some might see it, would you do it that way? Why not? I mean, they might put me on trial for representing a bunch of people in Guantanamo Bay who the American government said were terrorists. I have no problem with that. I think it's really, really good for us to explore these things. And part of my defence would be that all my guys were tortured and I want people to know about that. Right. So, you know, there can be anything. OK, I mean, w would it be w would it be better, uh, perhaps with school children, to concentrate on the issues rather than putting individuals on trial in that sense? Do you know what? I think it's always best to focus all discussions through a lens of individuals. Right. Because, you know, this isn't just some sort of academic debate. It's something that people have chosen to do. And they're really, really interesting issues that young people very often don't know who did them. You know, very few young people know that it was the Labour Party who were the ones who introduced student loans. Now, you know, they normally blame it on the Tories. Mm. I think it's kind of important yeah. that we should have right. that debate. Right, or on the Liberal Democrats, I think, and that promise. Danielle, what do you make of this? Is this a good idea? Oh, well, I do think it's fantastic that we're getting children involved in debating and public speaking. And I think, you know, it's part of a healthy democracy that we discuss political issues like these. But I do wonder whether this is just taking it a step too far. I mean, I'd much rather see children just debating the issues at hand and perhaps like learning about the people involved in it rather than putting one particular person on trial uh, and, and sort of putting it all on one person or one individual for the entire of a political movement, for example. So I, I, I do think it is a good thing. And perhaps, you know, we used to do uh, mock trials when I was at university. I studied history and we did a mock trial of uh, Thomas More, which was fantastic because he actually was put on trial and uh, yes. found guilty and executed. 
uh, but we did a sort of mock retrial of that. So uh, that was a fantastic way to learn about the subject. So I would like to see this um, used in perhaps other other instances in lessons. Yeah, definitely. Sienna, your response. Does this look like politicisation? Everything is political. You can't avoid that. I think it's it sounds really interesting. I mean, I, I went to French school, so we never did anything that was participatory. We never got out of our chairs. We never really discussed things. That's just not the kind of education that I received. But I think, you know, encouraging young people to be critical of establishment figures is always a good thing. And I think, I mean, as Danielle said, it sounds like the kind of thing you'd, you'd see at a university rather than a school or at a private school. So those kind of, you know, soft skills, the values of debating societies, mm. that sort of thing gives young people confidence as well and those sort of different skills. Gavin, what's your response to what you've heard from Clive? So I, I think that exposing young people to these issues is really good. Uh, I'm not sure about the personalisation. I mean, I, I generally don't like the whole way in which in history we sort of say Winston Churchill won the Second World War. You know, millions of people contributed that. And likewise, Nigel Farage on his own didn't deliver Brexit in this country. 17 million people you know, voted for it. So I'm not sure personalising it around individuals I necessarily agree with, but discussing these issues, absolutely. What about uh, Chris, Tony Blair on Iraq? Um, I, I'm, I'm relaxed about it. I, I think um, being able to marshal an argument, being able to express yourself, these are all really important um, parts of education. And I think it's good that... Um, uh, Gavin is right in the sense, I mean, if you, if you just look at Winston Churchill, for instance, um, you know, um, villain or hero, mm. um, a bit of both is the truth. And it's, and it's true of nearly everybody. And, and, and the, the very fact that by, by definition that in a trial, there are two sides of the argument. I think is an important uh, in relation to Tony Blair and Iraq as well. Right. I mean, I supported the war in Iraq, and I, and uh, and I don't resile from that. Um, and um, but uh, I think it's a perfectly legitimate thing for children to debate in school. Uh, Clive, you're listening uh, to this, I hope, uh, and still there. Um, just looking at the subjects or the trials that you are going to pursue, do you accept that you are presenting them and looking at them through a particular prism and viewpoint? No, I really don't. I think it's very much both sides. And, and honestly, what I would love, because what we need to do to support our teachers is to help them do things that they don't have the money and resources for. And the charity I'm running is exactly designed to do that. But there are lots of great people out there who could come and debate them. Chris, may I just issue a personal invitation for uh, you to come and be a witness in the Iraq war? I knew discussion. that was coming. I'm, I'm a I fool. Know, I, know. I, love, I love a bit no, of on-screen negotiation. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm, I'll come. I'll come. And, and but incidentally, I just want to, nothing, if, if, if we're virtually doing, um, if we're just talking about Iraq, one of the things I think we as a generation of politicians have to think about is if you look at our intervention or non-intervention in several different countries, Libya, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, um, Kosovo, where did we get it right and where did we not get it wrong, right? Um, mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of lessons to be learned, so I'd be happy to take part. All right, well, there, Clive. Which would Clive. be wonderful, and I really appreciate it. All that. right, well, you've That's got an acceptance attitude. there. Thank you very much uh, for joining us.